G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video. We've just got a little short one today, about, what what will it be, maybe 15 minutes long. Just showing uh, this Daily Race C from last week, which I thought was actually a very, very good race. It's an interesting race too, because it's a class we don't generally see too often here at Le Mans, uh, which is where we are today. We are racing in the Group 2 category, so... Uh, like all of the Super GT cars, the GT500 cars, and there's a couple of new cars in, one of which we're driving. As you can see by the beautifully presented shiny hood ornament on the front of my car, we are driving a Mercedes-Benz, and it's the Mercedes-Benz CLK uh, LM. It's basically the Le, 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 Le Mans version, if I can speak properly and not get all tongue-tied and twisted. Uh, the Le Mans version of the Mercedes-Benz CLK class. Um, so we're going to start from the back for this one, and we're immediately past one of the Super GT cars, the Tom's RCF, the Lexus, from 2016. So we've got that old chestnut again, the 2016 cars, the 2008 cars, we've got even more in there now with this um, CLK from the 90s, I believe. We're going to go up the inside on the exit of Turt Rouge, uh, the other Lexus RCF. Actually, they've got rid of the branding. It's the Lexus RCF GT500 now. It's not the AU Tom's RCF as it was known in GT Sport. So there you go, the more you know. We're going to be racing down this straight, and one thing to note is that this particular car that I'm in, the CLK, was the best car of the week. Uh, I think basically just because of the straight line speed advantage that it has over some of the higher downforce cars. Given we're at Le Mans, which has a good four or five decently long straights, uh, it's definitely uh, definitely the car you want to be in. You definitely want to be in a car that has very good straight line speed. We're going to be, so I think we're just in the slipstream. We are. I've also been informed the slipstream is now one second in GT7, not uh, three quarters of a second as it was in GT Sport. But I think to make up for that fact, the slipstream in general is a lot weaker in this game. Up the inside of the GTR Nismo, the, the 2016 GTR, uh, into the second of the chicanes down the massive long straight towards the Molsan corner. That second chicane there, the La Floridier chicane, uh, up the inside there, as you can see, the straight line speed is there. There's a massive difference between the straight line speed of this Mercedes and the other Super GT cars. As you can see, another uh, GTO is getting absolutely shafted on the exit of the Molsan corner, and I'm launched out of that corner like nothing else. We're gonna jump over to the other side of the track and grab the slipstream of this guy who has a five and a half second penalty. Uh, absolutely insane from that particular driver there. And we're gonna be using this slipstream up through this straight towards Indianapolis. Very tricky corner to get right. However, you've probably realized by now we are actually fuel saving quite a bit. So we were fuel map six as we caught up to Sharp Gazer there. They're side by side ahead of him as well with another penalty being served. I think that's four and a half seconds. So the penalty system is uh, armed and ready to go. Oh, there's been some definition of contact there with Veeman with a four and a half second penalty. Payne Ozawa earns himself a five second penalty, but not soon enough to also serve it at the penalty gates we've just gone past. A little bit of a roadblock coming up towards the Porsche curves. I've got not really anywhere to go as the gap that I wanted to use was kind of closed off. So now I'm going to be stuck behind Payne, really putting the pain in his name and we are going to be stuck in his dirty air as we head through this flowing fast section towards the end of the lap here at Le Mans and he's got a five second penalty to boot which makes it a little bit more frustrating because it's almost like bro you're, you're about to serve a penalty and I'm being held up but by, by no means is he required to move out of the way, even though he does decide to oblige with that particular notion, running very wide on the last of the Porsche curves, and I managed to get an overlap up the inside towards the Ford chicanes, towards the last four corners of the track. You can cut these chicanes just like you could in GT Sport, or towards the end of GT Sport anyway, all over the chicanes. You've just got to be really ultra careful because I found in this particular car, over the chicanes, the rear tyre can sort of get hooked into the apexes of the chicanes in the curbs a little bit too much it can end up sort of spinning your car out so you'd have to be quite careful and it's probably in the long run a lot better to actually just take it a little bit conservative through there say we had a 24 hour race you'd probably just go conservative because you don't really want to be spinning out all the time if you've got 24 hours to do so but by the end of that first lap we are up into fourth position and we've got a little ways to go before we catch up to this guy up ahead it's uh, Johnny Depp Johnny Deeps Johnny Depp 
is escaping from his current trial and he is driving in Gran Turismo 7, uh, would you believe it? Um, but we don't really make any grounds to him just yet. He's got a two second penalty, so it's only gonna be a matter of time before we end up catching up to him when he serves that. Uh, but in fact, I think we cut that chicane too much. We do, half a second penalty for us. It's obviously nowhere near as big as Johnny Depp's penalty, which he'll serve just about here. Um, but, you know, a penalty is a penalty. Oh, yeah, he's going to serve that. And there's someone else serving as well. Jumpy, easy, 13, served a penalty. We did as well. We're going to be in the slipstream of D Johnny Depp. Never thought I would ever say that. But here we are. We're going to be saving this fuel. I haven't really touched on the strategy. This race is a no-stop race because the pit loss here at Le Mans is massive. And the tyres, you know, they're, they're well within uh, the, their sort of cap they're well capable of doing the full five laps here even with the tire wear multiplier we're running the only little bit of a question mark we have regarding strategy is the amount of fuel there's not quite enough fuel to make it to the end flat out so we are going to be fuel saving quite a bit by short shifting and fuel mapping where appropriate it's actually quite a large fuel saver to be honest because generally if it's a small fuel saver you can get away with a short shift and no mapping but here you need you need the mapping um, Johnny Depp runs it very deep into the last uh, chicanes there slight tap on his rear bumper as we head through the last section he does take it quite slow through there but we get the power down on the exit we're going to be using his slipstream you can see where we're shifting this clk about half shift 50 percent shift there i've no absolutely no clue where the power band on this car is maybe i'm losing a lot of power by short shifting but nevertheless we were short shifted and you can see it's working out quite well for us all over those curbs at the dunlop chicane and not a penalty in sight so maybe they've solved that particular penalty hotspot that particular penalty zone own on, uh, on the Le Mans track uh, from GT Sport to GT7. Obviously that Dunlop chicane was quite a notorious section for penalties. Jump on the brakes there. Normally you can get through there with just a slight brush on the brakes but Johnny Depp slams on the brakes just as he's slamming the brakes on Amber Heard's uh, legal team. Uh, we're going to be straight up the inside of the pair of them as he kind of gets caught out by the leader or the then leader, Aikmut, sort of taking a little bit of a slow line, trying to get the slipstream. We're just going to weave across the track ever so slightly. Some people don't like the weaving, but I, I don't really care uh, over the weaving just to break the slipstream. Obviously, if they're close enough to sort of be getting some overlaps and I'm starting to balk them, getting, getting you know, alongside by the weaving, that's when it starts to become an issue. But if, you know, I'm half a second up the road and I'm weaving to break that toe I don't really have a particular issue with that um, but by the end of that race we saved enough fuel we exit the last chicane and that is successfully completed a last to first or a, a no quality to first I don't think maybe we started quite in last position but we definitely started with no quality time we fought up through the pack and got ourselves an absolutely sensational victory in the Mercedes-Benz CLK now, when I first saw this car in the trailers, actually, I was quite excited, and uh, it's also a 1998 vehicle. Um, this is the end of the qualifying lap, um, so we'll see. We did have enough time to put a quick quali lap in. We'll see what it is when we end up across the line. I don't think it's going to be too flash. It's 335. I mean, it's not a disaster. Uh, we'll see where that puts us on the next grid. It's going to be pole position immediately. We had time for one lap, and the lap was good enough for pole. Um, but I was going to just touch on briefly, I was actually quite excited about this car being in the game because I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm a Mercedes bloke. I love a good Mercedes. So, you know, the fact that we've got like this old Le Mans car with a load of downforce, a load of grip, it's really nice to drive. I'm pretty, pretty excited about that. The other thing as well that's good about the daily race is you can rent a car now. And the word they've the word they've used is rent. So when you enter the event, you've got a button, say enter with garage car and enter with or like rent uh, a specified car or something and then it gives you the list of cars. They've used the implication of the word rent means you kind of have to pay for it. Uh, it's absolutely free. The only sort of difference there is you don't have the opportunity to put your own livery on it um, but yeah so basically a daily race can come up and even if you don't have the car you can still choose the car so you know there's no and there's no monetary penalty for that so you know it's a little bit weird I would have been absolutely fine paying a small fee to use the rented car to kind of you know force people to kind of say look you can do the race but we do want to encourage you to buy the car yourself and that's what I'm going to do anyway I like to own the car uh, to use it in the race and I can chuck a livery on it and monitor the odometer reading or whatever and yeah we're, we're good to go there but anyway I digress 
I'm going to show you this lap, where well, you've seen sort of some of the lap, just to kind of talk you through what we're doing, because you can see right now, after that one quali lap, we've started off pole position, and we've immediately gapped the entire field. Uh, so we're currently about 10 seconds ahead, and this lap is going to be my fastest, and we are going to be fuel saving, and I've had a good opportunity here from this little lonely drive out the front to actually just focus on my driving and just focus on my fuel saving and not actually have to worry about contending with any other cars around the circuit. So we did talk about uh, the fuel saving and sort of the, the technique of fuel saving quite a bit in the days of GT Sport, but for any of the new viewers uh, who may not be too familiar with what fuel saving is and how we do it in Gran Turismo and why we do it, um, please sit back and relax and enjoy. Uh, make sure you leave a comment if you're new here or, and like the, like the video while you're down there. But anyway, fuel saving, uh, generally when you're racing you try to go flat out absolutely flat out you shift the car right at the end of the rev range or most cars um, but the the uh, downside there is you use an absolute uh, bucket ton of fuel in this particular instance you can either go flat out and pit um, but the alternative there is to not quite use as much fuel you will drive a little bit slower but over the course of the race you don't lose enough time to equal the time you would lose by going flat out with the pit stop so the pit stop here I think is like 50 seconds so unless you're going 50 seconds slower by short shifting uh, the short shift is going to be worth it any day of the week the other good tool we have you're currently seeing in the bottom right hand side or bottom right corner of your screen is a little green gauge down there called fuel map you've got a power and a lean side power is max power the car is not sort of paying any attention to the efficiency it's just using all the fuel it requires uh, to do what you're asking of it you can flick the settings up to the leaner mix which I think is trying to emulate the air fuel mixture so obviously the power number one setting number one will use the most fuel in the mix possible um, whereas if you go up to like lean six it'll put more air into the fuel so you're gonna lose you're gonna use less fuel but you are gonna lose power because there's not enough fuel powering the engine so that's what we're doing generally the fuel map is quite you know it's quite intense quite intrusive it will drop your power quite significantly so you really only want to use it if you absolutely have to and if you do have to you want to use it at the end of the straights when your car's up at its top speed so if you're at low speed and you're using your fuel map you're going to be losing quite a lot of speed relative to everybody else whereas at the end of a straight you know you might be you already you got a massive amount of speed on the car, so you can kind of afford to go into that higher fuel map. It's also where your car tends to use the most fuel as you're generally topping out right at the top end of the rev range. Uh, but that particular lap there, you can see a 339.1, a little way off my 335 I managed to set in the qualification setting, um, but with the tyre wear on the car, which did become a little bit significant towards the end of lap 5 there, with that tyre wear plus that technique of fuel saving, you are going to have slightly slower lap time but over the course of that race that was what uh, you know four seconds or maybe three and a half seconds slower per lap than I was doing in qualifying and multiply that by five that does not equal 50 so it was definitely or it, I say was it is definitely worth fuel saving for that particular race but that's actually that's actually the end of the racing that's all I did on this daily race C because I was quite you know I I'm gonna. I'm just gonna go out on a little bit of a tangent here. It, I guess it's not really a tangent, but a little, little slight unrelated note. I don't want to be this guy, but I didn't actually find that race, that particular race, too interesting because I set one quality time and then I was miles ahead of the rest of the field. I finished that particular race, I think, 35 seconds ahead of the guy in second. That's just not fun. Well, I want to be. I want to be racing. I want to be having a hard fought, hard fought battle. And, you know, I really want to be, you know, pushing my skills to the limit because that, you know, it's a good drive and a win is a win, you know, you'll take it any time you can get it. But it's always more fun if you actually have to sort of fight for your position a little bit. So it wasn't that interesting and I actually left that race there. And it sort of begs the question, is it worth maybe starting an EMEA account? There's obviously a lot of players in EMEA and therefore those top couple of splits, which I'd likely be in at my skill level, probably a lot more competitive compared to what we just saw in Oceania. I, of course, don't know if that was actually Oceania top split, but I would like to think it was because I'd also spent the whole day that I did this race you just saw uh, on daily race A, where I was kind of winning quite frequently. 
possibly, so I would like to think my DR is high enough to be in that top split. And if that is indeed Oceania top split, then it's not very, not very competitive. Uh, like, no offence to anybody else, but, you know, it's all relative, it's all subjective, what someone considers c uh, competitive or not, and that particular uh, lobby for my particular skill level was not the competition I was after. So, I don't know, maybe I should start an EMEA account. The only stipulation there is there might be a little bit of a problem with lag, but I guess it won't be the end of the world if it doesn't work out, because we can always go to the United States or whatever. But anyway, if you did enjoy the video, do hit the like button and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos and streams from me. Do leave a comment as well, as questions, comments and constructive criticism, as always, very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today, and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.